My name is Kirsten Winters, and I'm honored to have been asked by Pastor Grace to discuss two topics that go hand in hand. One is about mental health during the time of the pandemic, and also grief and loss. My family experienced a loss. Um, a cousin died to COVID-19, so I'll tell you more about that. Um, so I work for Arlington County. I'm a mental health, emergency mental health worker, and I work very closely with the police, um, hospitals, uh, local families, and sometimes I've been close to the front lines during the COVID-19 crisis. Um, I see all of the stress that our heroic emergency room doctors and first responders face every day. Um, but I also get to experience the joy of helping people find treatment and healing from the crises that they experience. In early April, I lost a cousin to COVID-19. Um, he lived in New York City, in Brooklyn, very close to where my brother lives. Uh, he's my father's first cousin, and they were very, very close. And I knew him through my life, through family events, um, bar mitzvahs, and family reunions and other things. Um, the week before he passed, ironically, my father was talking to me about his fear for all of the cousins in New York and my brother there. So it was stunning when we had news very shortly after of my cousin, Michael Edelman, passing away due to the COVID-19 virus. Um, it somehow made the situation shockingly real and profound. It was right when New York City was really starting to experience a lot of death, um, and it just was stunning to be sort of a part of that. I can't explain after that the pain of watching my cousin's wife and his sons and his brother experiencing a funeral ceremony and later Shiva over Zoom. It was an honor to be there though, and but the sadness that knowing that they couldn't go to the gravesite and they weren't able to physically comfort each other was really profound. I did find hope through the memories that we shared, and I loved that I grew to know Michael better through that ceremony because I um, learned that he was very had spent his life working in social justice, and um, also was very uh, a very big proponent of the arts and the school system. And so I loved that our family values are very similar, um, and that gave me hope that we would carry that on through our generations of our family. I also was suddenly very terrified for my brother who lives in Brooklyn and he lives right across the street from a very busy hospital. We had a very serious talk right at that time about how to be safe and what the two of us would do if one of us passed away and what we would want for each other. Um, and it's a talk that I never anticipated at this time in my life having with him. And I sent him a care package of food and did everything possible to keep him from leaving his apartment. He, and he made it 34 days inside the apartment without leaving. So I'm proud that we could, I could play a part in that. Um, I also want to talk about mental health a little bit right now. Ironically, mental, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, so it's the perfect time to, to be discussing the topic. The mental health impact of this pandemic is happening now. And the fallout is going to be with us for a long time. We're all coping in different ways and also struggling. It's normal for people to feel depressed and fearful and anxious in this time of uncertainty. You might experience changes in sleep or depressed mood. You might find that your appetite changes. You might lose interest in activities. You might sleep more or less. You might eat more or less. And you might worry a lot more than usual. It's important to be kind to yourself and know that some days are productive and on others, we're just getting by. Self-care is really crucial and sometimes that might mean watching TV all day or cooking or sometimes it can mean getting out for exercise and distantly socializing. Sometimes you just don't get anything done and that's just where you are on that day. We've been given lots of tools to try and protect our physical health like masks and dis disinfectants um, and social distancing but we also really need tools to protect our mental health. I'm going to share some information about mental health during stressful times and some ideas about how to cope. We're not alone and we always have God in our faith and through that faith, we know that there's always somewhere to reach out and have hope. I was walking with a friend today and we were discussing about how faith 
gives us the ability to have hope. It's the ability to open ourselves up to the unknown and believe that there will be answers and new opportunities, and we can't always foresee that. Faith allows us to surrender and to know that we can only do what is within our ability to help ourselves and others. We can find ways to love our families and ourselves, and we can find ways to give back to our community through our faith. The rest is with God. When thinking about this video, I asked some of my colleagues about how they are coping with being first responders and caring for themselves during the COVID-19 crisis. One of, my, um, one of my colleagues shared that she found a small chapel and it provides a safe space to sit and pray. And that made me think a lot about how important it is for all of us to find our sacred space and sacred place within ourselves where we can focus and find intention. My other colleague joins in a prayer group and they intentionally pray for people working on the front lines, um, which again reminded me of intention in our prayer. Um, my bureau chief graciously put together a short presentation about mental health and I will share that as an attachment. It's called Surviving Coronavirus. It provides a lot of information again about symptoms you might experience of mental health and Remember, it's normal to struggle in times of global crisis, and it's normal to reach out for help. You are not alone. Last and most important, if anyone, you, a friend, or a family member, is experiencing mental health crisis, please reach out for help. All of our local counties in Virginia, in all of Virginia, we have emergency mental health teams and Crisis Link is a 24-hour hotline available to Virginians. And I'm always happy to talk to people about mental health issues, mental illness, how we, what kind of resources we have in the community, and if anybody's searching about what to do, please feel free to be in touch with me. Thank you very much. It was, uh, like I said, an honor to share some of my work and experience with all of you, and hope to see you in church again soon, someday.